What's up guys? Happy Saturday. Blake Jameson here. Check out this awesome bat. It's by a company called Dinger Bats. Also here. We're going to do a little bit of a collab. I'm going to paint on these beautiful bats. And then uh, I think we're going to auction them off for charity. We haven't really decided exactly how we're going to execute that. I'm just doing a couple. But I just want to give uh, Dinger Bats a shout out before we get started. I'm not being paid to say that by the way. Uh, I'm just excited to work with them. Okay. Happy Saturday, guys. This is a pre-recorded video that you guys are watching at 1020. Blah. This is a pre-recorded video that you guys are watching at 1023, and I very much appreciate that. I've decided to take half of Saturday off and all of Sunday off, but I do have something special for the video tomorrow night, which we'll get into in a second. I decided to switch it up for tonight's video. I'm going to give you guys a breakdown of some of my favorite books in different categories. So we're gonna do favorite books of all time, fiction books, business books, and art books. And then I also have a couple bonus recommendations which are narrators, because as you probably know, I do a lot of audiobooks on Audible. I do about, I'd say 200 books per year, but that doesn't factor in that I listen to some books many, many times per year. So if you ever come to my studio, chances are there's an audiobook on, I always listen to audiobooks while I paint, while I cut my stencils, all kinds of stuff. So in today's video, I'm just going to break it down for you guys and tell you guys some of my favorite books uh, coming from someone who has gone through about 600 books in the last three years. These are my top picks in each category. So I'm doing five from each category, five from art, five from business, five from fiction, and then my top three of all time. I guess we'll just start with the best stuff. My favorite books of all time. All right, so let's get straight into it. And also, just so you guys know, down below this video, there are links, Amazon links, to all of these books, every single one. And um, you can get them either in a physical book, you can get them on Kindle, or you can get them on Audible, for the most part. Some of them are Audible exclusives. Some might not be on Audible. You get the idea. Those links will take you straight to the book. I do want to do a full disclaimer, those are Amazon affiliate links. It has no bearing on what you pay for the book. If you buy a book through that link, I get a very small percentage. I think it's, I don't know what it is, 1%? Uh, I'm a businessman and I hope that you can understand that. Now if you don't want to use an affiliate link, totally understand, just Google search the book title or the author or whatever, no hard feelings. Okay, we got that out of the way. Let's jump straight into my favorite books of all time. Starting with my very first favorite book of all time. And in fact, I have a tattoo. This means this says Maktoub in Arabic, which means it is written. It's uh, very dominant in my favorite book, which is The Alchemist by Paulo Coelho. Amazing story. I think that there are amazing life lessons in it. It's a very quick read or listen. Awesome, something that you can do with kids. It's very inspiring and uplifting to me. I listen to it four or five times a month. No joke. Four or five times a month I go through that book, front to back. I love falling asleep to it. I love waking up to it. It's just all around. Amazing book. Highly recommended if you haven't read it. Check out The Alchemist by Paulo Coelho. Next favorite book of all time is called As a Man Thinketh by James Allen. I prefer the audiobook version that is narrated by Ray Porter. There are several different versions on Audible and also different versions in print, but I like Ray Porter's version the best, partially because I love him as a narrator. I think that the book content is awesome and I will be referring back to that book kind of in the rest of these recommendations. It's really just that your thoughts, what you think dictates your life. And I believe that that is entirely true um, yeah, that's, that's pretty much it. As a Man Think It by James Allen. Check it out if you haven't. That one is even faster. That one is like 45 minutes for the audiobook. No joke. Start to finish. You can finish the whole book in less than an hour and you can read it. I mean, it's, I don't know how many pages that is, but it's a short book. You can read it very, very fast. Once again, I do this five times a month at least, probably more since it's so short. Highly recommend it. Okay, next one. The Giving Tree by Shel Silverstein. My mom used to read this book to me as a kid. <laughs> it's a 
great book. Highly, highly recommended, even for adults, obviously, um, great for kids as well. Yeah. I need to get a physical copy of that here in the studio. Uh, that is something that I need. Matt, if you're watching, please add that to the list of things that we need to pick up. Okay, let's go forward to art books. So these books are different and di like some of them are really good for inspiration. Some are good for the business side of things and organizational side. I kind of break it down. Number one, and these are not necessarily in order. These five are just my five favorite art books of all time. The Artist Way by Julia Cameron. Great book, definitely for inspiration and also for process. I think that the journaling aspect of it, it's called Morning Pages, Waking Up and Journaling, uh, can be a very helpful thing for artists and also for non-artists. Highly recommend that you guys check it out. There's a companion workbook that you can do with the book that takes you through the, all the exercises. I recommend that you do that. Next book is The Spark and the Grind by Eric Wall. This book, it talks about the balance between the spark, which is the creativity, and the grind, which is the business and the organizational part that actually is required to run a successful art business, and how they can mix, and how you can kind of balance both the spark and the grind. I also really appreciate it in this book. It's narrated for the audiobook, partially by the author, Eric Wall, and then every other chapter is actually narrated by his wife. I'm blanking on her name, but... It's really cool dynamic to have him and his wife both talking about the creative practice as a whole and looking at the creative side and the business side and how to kind of marry those two sides together. Highly recommend it. The next one is called Getting Your Shit Together by Karen Atkinson. On the book it says S-H uh, asterisk T, but very good book in terms of, like it says, getting your shit together for an artist. And it talks about everything from like how to document your work, um, how to set up like, it's just like, it's all the back end of, of the whole, of an entire art business. Um, how to photograph and document and record your work, how to have contracts with different galleries and like, it just, it's so much. And that book is big. And I also recommend getting the physical book. That's one that I don't think there's an audio book of. I have the physical book, it's, it's a big red book, and uh, mine is like highlighted and doodled in and written all over. Very good book, if you are in the art business. If you're not in the art business, it doesn't really pertain to you. And the last one, don't be fooled by the title, it's called Make Art, Make Money. It's by Elizabeth Hyde Stevens, and it is a story, or it's kind of a biography about Jim Henson, who created the Muppets, and, uh, many, many things. And it talks about how Jim was really good at making the art, but also control, like keeping creative control of the art, which helps make money. So for like licensing with companies like Disney. So that is a very good book as well. Jim Henson is a legend. And that book I think does a really good job breaking down his kind of creative focus. But at the same time on the business side of things, focusing on keeping creative control and maintaining, really maintaining ownership of your own work and not selling the complete license of your own work to someone else that then they can butcher it and do something completely different. Very helpful, I think, for art and business. Okay, next we're gonna do fiction books. Okay, I do a lot of fiction books. I love fiction. For some reason, I can, I can be painting I can be listening to a fiction book or, or cutting a stencil or listening to a fiction book and things that happen in a fiction book will help me solve problems in my business or help me think of creative ways to solve problems in my life. Sometimes more so than self-help books that are geared to do exactly that and it's, and it's awesome. And, and also what I love is that in a fiction book, I really get lost in the story and so I can be cutting a stencil for hours and hours and hours and if I'm listening to a fiction book that I really love, with the narrator that I really, really love, it's super easy for like three, four, five hours to just burn by in no time flat, and I get a ton of cutting done, or a ton of painting done, and I'm deep into a story that I, that I love. First one, again, no particular order, these are just my top five right now. The Helldiver series by Nicholas Sansbury Smith. He is an amazing author, I, I think he's a great writer, 
The Hell Diver series specifically is kind of a post-apocalyptic post dystopian future where basically the world, uh, there's like a World War III kind of situation. Everyone nukes each other and the only way to survive is there are these airships and everyone in the human race goes up to low orbit basically in these airships. And they're staying afloat and stuff and they're okay and they're kind of surviving, but in order to continue to survive, there's a small group of people who are called hell divers and they basically have to dive down to the earth's surface, collect a bunch of supplies, and then take this like helium balloon back up to the ship. I think it's really cool. And um, it's also narrated by one of my favorite narrators, R.C. Bray, and Nicholas is one of my favorite authors and now friends, which is awesome. I actually did a painting of him, fun fact, in 2017, I believe, of the main character, his name is X, Xavier Rodriguez from Helldivers. I gave that to him as a gift, and uh, we're still friends to this day, which is awesome. Next one is called the Mountain Man series. It is by Keith C. Blackmore. Again, a uh, fiction book narrated by my favorite narrator, R.C. Bray, one of my favorite narrators. And this one is a zombie fiction book. So there's a zombie outbreak. There's this main character, Gus. He uh, ends up living in this like kind of compound giant. All right, the camera shut off for some reason. I am actually not sure why, and I don't know exactly where it cut off. We're just gonna jump back in. Next one on the list, Artemis by Andy Weir. He's the guy that wrote The Martian, which is another great book. Didn't make the cut on this list, but it is good. He did get one on the list, Artemis. Now the reason that I picked this book is because it's actually narrated by a female narrator, Rosario Dawson. I wish that there were more female narrators that I was aware of that I could follow their work. I think she did a phenomenal job with the book. The story is awesome. Artemis by Andy Weir, definitely check it out. Uh, spoiler alert, it takes place in space and it's awesome. Okay, now we're going to get to the final segment, which is the business books. Now, I do want to put out a disclaimer. From a marketing standpoint, I understand why some of these people do this. But from a moral standpoint, I don't want you guys to think because of the titles of these books that I'm obsessed with money. I'm not obsessed with money. In fact, I have a tattoo, Love Over Money, right here. Anyways, we'll just put that out there. Okay, first one. It's called The Like Switch by Jake Schaefer. He's a PhD, he's an ex-FBI agent, and the book is all about the psychology of getting people to like you. I think that it's very helpful in business, it's very helpful in personal life, and it's just very helpful across the board, and I just think it was just one of those books, it's rare when a business book is hard to put down, and I thought that was one of them. Everyone has different tastes, but who knows. I really liked it, The Like Switch by Jake Schaefer. Next one, a classic, Think and Grow Rich by Napoleon Hill. Now this ties back to that one of the first books I mentioned, As a Man Thinketh. It's really just kind of what's up here makes everything else in your reality. Obviously there are, there are exceptions and, and I, don't know how, I don't know how to say it, but at the end of the day, the only thing that we can really control is how we think and how we react to the situations that we find ourselves in. If we can get better at thinking, I think we can make our, make better circumstances. And that, that comes through a process. You know, if you have these type of thoughts, that tends to manifest into certain habits, which ends up producing certain results. That's kind of a theme throughout Think and Grow Rich, as well as As a Man Thinketh, as well as the next one, which I'm about to get into. So, Thinking Grow Rich, Napoleon Hill, it is a classic, highly recommended. The next one is called You Were Born Rich. This is by a guy named Bob Proctor. Essentially, it's Thinking Grow Rich, but it's written in the modern age, and so he's got a lot, lot of examples in it that are like actual people in today's age and how they're applying those principles. So I do think that it's worth including both. They both cover a lot of the same stuff, but they also have some different stuff, so I think it's worth reading both. Really like You Were Born Rich by Bob Proctor. Next one is called Thirst by Scott Harrison. Scott Harrison is the guy who founded Charity Water, but he has an interesting past where he actually came here to New York and he was a very successful club promoter, 
you know, out networking and at the coolest parties, networking with the richest people or whatever, like all living the high life. And sometimes trucks drive by. And he kind of came to this um, moment of self-discovery, deciding that that although he was making a ton of money and was quote unquote successful by traditional standards or society standards, he wanted to do something that was very fulfilling and that led him to founding Charity Water, which helps build wells and give fresh water to more people throughout the world, which I think is amazing. I loved the story. I like that he narrates it himself for the audiobook version. I just think he seems like a great dude. Someday I would like to meet him. So Thirst by Scott Harrison, highly recommended. The next one, last one of the business books, is actually one that I just started last night or yesterday. So I'm only like a quarter way done, but it's a pretty long book. So that's, I've gotten a good chunk out. And it's Tools of Titans by Tim Ferriss. And this book came out a while ago, I think a year or two ago, but I didn't get it because it was like super thick and it only came in hardback or paperback, physical books. I don't do a lot of reading. I'm actually, I am trying to change that, but Based on everything that I do in my life, audiobooks work really well for me. So I was waiting till it came out on audiobook. It just did like literally last week. So I got it, just started it last night. It's amazing. Highly recommend. It's amazing so far. I'm sure that it's not going to disappoint for the rest of the book. So highly recommend Tools of Titans by Tim Ferriss. And then the last thing, the bonus thing is if you do, if you're like me and you want to do audiobooks instead of book books, I think that having a good narrator is very important. A great narrator will make a good book great. A bad narrator will make a great book good. You get the idea. I think that is very, very important for me, for my attention span, for my enjoyment. So I found, I'm going to share with you my two favorite narrators of all time. I do have, a, there's like probably 10 of them in maybe a close second tier category. And, and on a future video, I'll share those because if you guys might get through all the first two narrators like I did, but it's R.C. Bray, first and foremost, Ray Porter, very, very close second. Sometimes I am more in a Ray Porter mood uh, and then everyone else is below them, but I think they do an amazing job. They are full-time book narrators. Both of them have hundreds and hundreds of titles on Audible. I'm sure um, you've probably seen or heard books by them is my guess. Highly recommend all of those. Anyways, it's pretty much it. I know it was a quick video tonight, but again, I really appreciate you guys tuning in. So tomorrow I'm going to be doing, I'm going to be showing a interview that I did with Sophia Chang. We had it earlier this week and I'm also going to be teasing her, her next card, which is Roberto Clemente coming out this week. I think it's on Tuesday, but I'm not sure because we had that day that we missed on tops last week. Might be Wednesday. Anyways, definitely keep an eye out for that card. And I hope you tune in tomorrow and see that interview. We do plan to do another interview where we're going to do it live. So you guys can ask questions and she can answer in real time, which I think will be super fun. But she's actually planning to go on a road trip with her family for the next, uh, I think it's a week and a half or two weeks. And so I just wanted to get something um, to start introducing her to the audience. She was a very, very cool girl and killing it in the project. And it was an awesome conversation. So I hope you guys tune in tomorrow night and watch that as well. Once again, if you guys heard any books that you want to check out, there are links down below this video. They are Amazon affiliate links, which means that they cost the same amount to you, but I get a very small percentage. I think it's under 2%. Uh, but you don't have to buy them through those links. It's just for convenience purposes if you want to. Uh, otherwise, you could just Google search it and you can find it. Hey, so one last thing before I leave you guys, and again, thank you guys so much for tuning in. If there are any books on that I talked about today that you really want and you simply can't afford for whatever reason, I want you to email books at blakejameson.com. It's a brand new email address I just set up. Tell me what book, tell me your email address if you have an Audible account or if you want the physical book, tell me your mailing address. I will send you the book. I really want you guys to read them. They're amazing. They've changed my life. I want them to help change yours. So I'm Blake. Stay awesome.